Welcome to another RD Works Learning Lab. Well, look, here we are in the warm again because I'm trying to find any excuse to not go out in that cold workshop. Instead, I've brought my machine inside here to the office. Not exactly, but nearly. I've been a little bit busy because I'm basically lazy and thinking to myself, <sighs> hundreds and hundreds of tests, lots and lots of wood, lots and lots of plastic, all to find a compound lens combination. There's got to be a better way. And I think I've found one. So I can make a start without going anywhere near my workshop. So let's have a look, see what I'm doing. Well, what we've got here is a, um, a fairly crude emulation of a lens tube. Yeah, I know my lens tubes aren't this long. Hey, but look, I've got two lenses. And I've also got here a laser source. Okay, so it's a red laser. But nice bright light, and it is very similar to a laser in that it has got a, um, a Gaussian distribution, and the center is very, very bright. And if I take it the full length here, you'll see that the spot doesn't change size. So it's basically a parallel beam of light to emulate what we've got in the machine. Here we've got a seven and a half inch lens. So if I put my measuring stick beside it, seven and a half inches, it should be about there for focus. I don't know what it looks like to you, but to me, that is quite a bright spot. It's small, but I would say it's probably one, one and a half millimeters diameter you can't really see it because it has a tendency to burn out the cells in the back of your eye and you get you get totally the wrong impression of what that light is so what i've done i discovered that i had some plastic which is a sort of a um a frosted finish and it has some fantastic properties look it filters out all the excess light and just leaves the really densest part so that you can see clearly what size the very dense spot is. Well, I hope you may be able to see at the moment that's a, an out of focus spot. It might look bright on the screen there, but it's actually not. It's a, a pretty diffused spot. But as I move further away, the spot gets very small. And it stays small, probably about a millimetre diameter. Now look, if I put a pair of sunglasses on you, You can see the difference. The bright spot in the middle and the defocused beam round the outside. Okay now obviously what I'm looking for is the is the bright spot. Now this is just a simple seven and a half inch lens. So here I've got a two inch uh, meniscus lens. It's a PVD meniscus lens and as you can see I can change the shape of the spot by moving it around. Let's just take it out. You can see the difference in the spot size between having the lens in, how it's actually picked up the central part of the beam and refocused it very very sharply and that's the feature that I wish to investigate. So the question is what dimensions do I need between the lenses and what's the focal distance after the lens? Now, focal distance, as I said, is becoming a bit of a, a misnomer because if we look carefully at this here, there will be a point where it starts to grow. And here I am at about 10 millimeter distance away from the lens. And it's still a very, very sharp focus. So technically, that one has got a focus which is anything from 10 millimeters, and I don't know because I can't get any closer, to probably about there somewhere. And that is 80 millimeters. That's 70 millimeters of sharp energy. Very, very fine, high energy, very intense light. So that, that shows you exactly what I'm looking for, this very thin beam of high energy light that passes right through the center of the lenses. So we've got 
80 millimeter of focus there effectively. You're not going to set this to mid focus 40 millimeters because you're not going to find it very easily. I think the only way that you're going to set this up is to move it in close until it starts to go out of focus. And as soon as it starts to come into focus, you're going to call that your focal point and then you'll know that you've got 70 millimeters of energy to work with. So here we've got a piece of kit that enables me to visibly check what I think the best range of focus is before I start losing my high energy dot that's in the middle there. So I'm going to be doing this visibly at the moment rather than with pieces of material. Once I've checked all these variations out on this little test fixture, we can start throwing some of the better results into real tests on the machine to see how closely we can correlate this test data with real data. I mean, tests that would take me half an hour, an hour each, are taking me, what, 10 seconds? You know, I can fiddle around with this, I can fiddle around with this. I can then turn the lenses over, swap the lenses, change the numbers, but the problem is, how do I record all this lot? We've got an image of my jig, we've got the screen, we've got the second lens and the first lens, and then we've got the LED light source. There are only really two important dimensions to us. One of them is a separation between the lenses, and the other one is the focal range. So for these two positions, I've got two possible shaped lenses that I can use. I've got the meniscus lens and I've got the plano convex. So here we've got a, B, C, D, which are the options of a plano convex one way or the other way, and then a meniscus one way or the other way. And then I've got the same configuration on the leading lens as well, the first lens. Within this range, we've got two other major factors that we need to record. We've either got Y or Z for zinc selenide and X for gallium arsenide. So when I come down here and I, for instance, am using a plano convex lens in this position, that's lens A, so I should go to the A column and I shall specify what lens I'm using and the configuration. Is it going to be A, S, which is a plano convex, four inch long, there. Okay, and then I do the same for this one over here. And then we work out the focal range over which the dot was as small as I could visibly estimate it stayed the same and sharp. And then we looked at the separation between the lenses. There we go. We've got all the data for every single combination in a nice little chart here that enables me to go back. But the most important thing is really assessing. We're looking really for the biggest focal range that we can find. And look, we find one here that's 50 millimeters. OK, that looks pretty good to have 50 millimeter focal range. But hey, the separation is 115. That's quite a big separation between the lenses in a lens tube. That means we're going to have to have a very long lens tube if this is actually what happens in reality. Because remember, we're using a slightly different wavelength of light here. And so the actual results may be slightly different to these. We've got another 50 here. But this one covers a range of 90 to 45. But look at the separation. The separation in this instance is only 60 millimeters. Well, that's very, very comfortable for a normal lens tube, which I think is about 85 or 90 millimeters long. So that would fit into a lens tube with a 50 millimeter of focal range. And we've got 45 to 90. Well, 45 to 90, I think you'd probably set the distance between the lens and the nozzle to maybe something like 40 millimeters. So that means you'd, you'd be quite close in with your nozzle to the work. And then you know that you've got a powerful beam which is going to go flying out for another 50 millimetres. At the moment, these, these are obviously a set of relative results. But hopefully, the ones that come out the best in this set of tests, hopefully will come out the same in reality. But it does enable me to sort out the terrible combinations away from the better combinations. And this one looks like a better combination at the moment. These are not very good. A 15 millimeter focal range with 125 mil separation. Well, that's junk, isn't it? <laughs> so this is a very quick and simple way for me to run through all my lenses and try and find a good combination that we can try on the machine. It limits the amount of machine time I'm going to be spending and the amount of 
wood and plastic that I'm going to be burning up. So I thought I'd just drop this little short session in just to bring you up to date where I am at the moment. Um, we've got lots of lenses to try. I'm waiting for some more lenses from, uh, from China, but some of the lenses I'm getting from China I will not be able to use on this test rig because they're gallium arsenide and gallium arsenide does not transmit light. It transmits infrared, but it doesn't transmit visible light. Here's a gallium arsenide lens, look, it's absolutely black. And here you can see what I mean, look, there's the gallium arsenide lens in there, and there's my screen, nothing, no light at all coming through. I've got to do my basic work with zinc selenide lenses and get the best guess I can, but if it turns out that there's a two and a half inch lens at the bottom, then a gallium arsenide lens would be the right one to use because it's got more power handling capability. So anybody that wants to use this on say a 120 or 150 watt machine won't be burning out their lens at the bottom if they use a gallium arsenide lens. Well, thanks for your time. I'm all right. I'm in here in the warm with my machine and uh, I'll catch up with you in the next session. Bye for now.